Passing like shot full effect in one more week. Nice. There you go. All right. Well, this is how to do the pit. Uh, I'm going to show you all the methods. So we'll be going through this, and I'll be running every single every single area through this area. Maybe when you come to the pit, make sure you have fire resistance. Make sure you have uh, acid resistance. Make sure you have electric resistance, because you will need all of those things, as well as immunity to magic missiles, because the spellcasters in here are really, really annoying. Uh, even one step beyond that, make sure you have feather falling, because without feather falling, a lot of this pit will be very, very annoying. Uh, a jump item is also definitely useful, or anything that just gives you access to high enough strength to do some of the jumps. There are some areas where having a higher jump is beneficial. So yeah, jump, feather falling, uh, on the wall, and the elemental absorptions, all that is pretty good. So first you just follow that path that I went, which is basically just running up. Once you do that, you're going to come into this lever room. All you have to do is pull all the levers on the outside, on all four corners, and the middle lever. Essentially, this is just like one of the uh, button puzzles from um, Shroud, like a 3x3, three three, except it's with levers. So it's all four corners and the middle. And then all of a sudden, this will be done. So all these things will be lit up here, and you leave. So you come into here, all four corners, and the middle. Check. Next, you're going to notice there's two indistinct towers. There's a tower here, and there's a tower over here. Um, you can see them indicated by these two different spots. Uh, we're going to be going to the furnace. The furnace is always in the far tower, and it's near the bottom. So you can just float down here. The furnace is the lowest point in the entirety of this area. So if you're ever not sure where the furnace is, when you have to light the furnace, it's just go down to get to the furnace. This area, the pit, has a lot of ups and downs, ups and downs, uh, and so uh, you know there's a lot of a lot of stuff you have to kind of have to learn how to do. Once you start to get into these rooms, this is where you need the shield as well as the other resistances, because now you have Dwiblis showing up, all these trigolodites that are all spooky and scary. It's gonna be kicking their asses real quick, uh, hmm, real quick. And then once all these monsters are dead, then you're gonna be climbing up. There is in fact some lev valves. There's a valve down there. Uh, there's a valve in each furnace room. Unlocking all three valves, which I will do after I'm done this, will uh, automatically make it so that you will have uh, access to Mux, or not Mux, the Avatar of Drublex, to get yourself a Mux Doom at the end if you want. So that's a thing. Uh, as we move up here, we're essentially just climbing up the furnace. There's two ways to do this section. Uh, you can either, if you have enough jump and movement speed, you can just jump over and get to that next area. I don't, so I have to jump along these pipes. And just kind of keep moving forward. If you're ever unsure where to go, generally, you're always attempting to go the... Ugh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was trying to, like, shoot this guy at the same time and I fell. Anyway, that's... that's a, yeah, you fall. That's how you do it. So you kind of do that. Anyway, I'm just going to be going up and uh, shooting at these stupid assholes. Is a run-up. Uh, can you deconstruct the idea of being able to use Khan to hit as a defender capstone? Uh, sounds like the worst idea in DDO's history. Uh, no thanks. So, to deconstruct that idea, I think that that would be a bad idea, because Constitution to hit will enable Constitution to hit and damage, which means your health stat and your damage stat are based off of the same thing, which means there is no reason in the entire video game to make a decision to do anything other than stack health, because it is both the safest and the strongest. Because Constitution is very easy to stack from all the different th uh, effects of the game. So it would be, overall, a bad idea for the entirety of the whole video game. Without question. I hope that was a good deconstruction, and that's what you wanted. If you wanted me to defend or promote the idea of con to hit, I am vehemently against it, and it is bad. Anyway, you climb up here, you come up all the way on this thing. This is why you need some jump. There's an acid trap here that you can get hit by. There's a little lever here. You might need to kill these fire elementals and you pull this lever. Once this is done, you come down here. And uh, now we have to go to the pit security. Where is the security? The security is this area right down here. However, uh, this is the front door. So if you have dimension door, you can dimension door and then just run straight. And it's straight across from where you spawn in. We don't have that. So we're just going to go up. Which class benefits the most from Fade Dark Illusionist Tree? Uh, all of the classes benefit pretty well from Fade Dark Illusionist. Um, I don't think there is a clear winner of Fade Dark Illusionist. Depends on the character you're trying to make. Um, kind of hit with shields which could be viable, maybe. But yeah, like, kind of hit damage is just not a great idea. That's why most games that have, like, stuff that scales off of, like, percentage hit points, it's really, really low scaling numbers, even, like, League of Legends. 
and there was a time where there was an item that would scale your health into raw attack damage, and they cut that out of the game. Anyway, you run straight up as far as you can and as high as you can, and eventually you'll get to this area, the security center. So once you're in the security center, there is a whole bunch of uh, security wheels that you have to turn. I don't know where the wheel solutions are, uh, which is why instead you are going to go onto the DDO wiki, either on your phone or on your second monitor or just Alt-Tab, and then with this information, you're then going to look up what each of the symbols are supposed to be, and then just go to each of the wheels around the room and put in the symbols. In here, there are a ton of spellcasters. You want to make sure you have all your elemental resists up, because if you do not, it, you will be in big danger. So don't get caught uh, without having the appropriate information. So this one is this symbol. Uh, people call all sorts of stuff. I just call that squiggly lines, because I don't I see anything with it. Yellow here is the double-crossed T. I should go here, like a, like a double cross T. So how I think about that, it's right there. We move up. Sounds like a future life. No. Anyway, blue is right here. And blue is the lightning bolt. So we're going to come over here and just turn it onto this one. Uh, the pattern is the same every time. So as long as you know what it is, uh, you can always get it done. So as I said, uh, the wiki is your friend. Just look it up if you're ever unsure. Uh, don't feel bad about it because looking stuff up and getting information and the extra resources is good. The healthy thing to do. It's something you should always strive to do. Uh, green is N, which is this one right there. I've heard some people call that one elephant. Orange is H. be nice they make or change an enhancement tree to be similar to use shield as main weapon to attack like smiter and diablo 2 uh well that's literally the point of the vanguard tree so i'm not sure what you mean by that Utgard. you can just do that just play vanguard and the last one is uh upside down wheelchair on the red as the wheel slides into and you're all set now we come over here, and there's a loud pop where we have to pull this lever, and we have to go back to the uh, fir second furnace. Now, the second furnace, as I said, it is down, because the furnace is always down, and we had to come up. So we're trying to go here, to this door where this guy is, and we are in here. So since you can see it's right there, we're just going to go out into this big double shaft here, and just go straight down. Uh, this is why feather falling is really nice, because it lets you just kind of glide to where you need to go all the time. As a double check, make sure you always have your shield up, among your other spells. It is very, very useful. Uh, I am likely going to be shrining in here at some point, just to get access to more uh, Bardic Inspirations. I don't have to worry about spell points for myself too much, but a lot of my... Uh, this character has a lot of short duration of effects that I need to constantly reuse. All right, so now you're in the second furnace. Uh, how do you get through here? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. There's a fast way and a slow way. Uh, the fast way is what I'm going to show you how to do today. I don't know if I can do the fast way. Actually, I might not have enough jump. It involves killing this elemental. So this fire elemental here is in the way. Uh, you want to jump up where he is. So we're just going to kill him here first. So we kill him. And then you're going to take his place. Aha! With this, you can then get up to this extra ledge, which I personally cannot do, um, which is unfortunate. But anyway... I can't do that. So I can't do the fast way because I don't have enough jump. But if you do, you can just jump over this pipe and jump over there and climb up this lever, this ladder. I don't have enough jump, so uh, I have to go the long way around. So I'll show you how to do the long way. So the long way is a little bit more dangerous because uh, you have to deal with some extra monsters. So you have to deal with all these traps. This seems dangerous, but it's not. If you have feather falling, you just do this. Um, and you avoid all of this. When you come up here, there's going to be a troglodyte that spawns out of this when you pull this valve to turn off all those traps. So the troglodyte spawns, kill him, and you move on. Again, from here, you're just trying to get onto this pipe. Uh, from this pipe, you can climb up onto this ledge here. Climb up onto the ledge, and then you climb up onto this ladder. Take this all the way up to the top, and you are done with furnace number two. Again, make sure you have appropriate buffs up your uh, shield and ideally fire resistance because the monsters in here are quite spooky. These fire elementals have a really far aggro range, and they will likely start hitting you from uh, very far away. Uh, so don't give them the chance. Just go and uh, seal them in by pulling this. Sometimes they're champions uh, on regular servers. They can be Soul of Cruelty. Here, I don't know if there's any dangerous ones. Maybe Valara's legs if you don't see it, and you automatically get feared, and you're going to die. All right, so next is Power Breakers. Power Breakers is the absolute highest point in the entirety of this quest, so you're going to be going as high as you can get. You're going to be going all the way up. Is Vanguard viable in today's DDO? Yes. Uh, Vanguard is what I play as my main character. 
uh, or my main DPS in uh, raids and Reaper raids and stuff. So yes, it is very viable. Am I using two crossbows in a rune arm? Yes. You know, since like the saying that makes shield your main attack and your weapon your offhand attack. Yeah. So like, let me ask you the question: Why? Why should there be a shield attacking thing? Anyway, so you just keep going up. If you're not sure which way to go up, it doesn't matter. Because if you keep going up, eventually you'll find the right path. Like, if I went up this way, it doesn't matter. Because I will just end up being able to come back here in the future anyway. Okay, so this room uh, has a whole bunch of dangerous traps in them. To, di to disable the traps, apparently it was already done. So that's cool. I can't... So I'm going to stand here and explain this. To disable this, you have to pull every single lever in this room. you got to pull every lever on every wall to disable these traps. And it takes down this barrier and you can pull this lever. However, if you actually just get on top of it, use the backspace key to activate it, you can then just shuffle around while mashing activate, and eventually you'll use it through the barrier, which is like the only way you can do this quest. Because every other way is like madness. Alright, so the next step is main control. Main control is next to the shrine in the big room here. So we're going to be going all the way down into this second tower, and you're going to be coming here. See, there's indicated by a yellow, that's how you know you're supposed to come in here. There's a shrine there if you need to use the shrine, and then we're in main control. There's main control and bilge, both are actually technically active right now. Uh, because disabling uh, the, like the main power breaker activates both. It just uh, bilge for some reason isn't labeled on here because you're supposed to do it in this order. You have a forum thread explaining the Vanguard build? Yes, I have a forum thread called Strimtom's Vanguard that explains to you everything you need to know. It is a highly detailed Vanguard uh, build set. It is mildly out of date, but it's not that out of date. Anyway, so we come in here. We fit all the monsters. Apparently there's very few monsters in here. There we go. And then you just got to solve all these puzzles. How do you solve all these puzzles? Um, there's a lot of simple stuff. So basically, if you see like something like this, where it's a, a this puzzle tile, it has to come out straight. And so... You know, you just go, okay, well, this has to come out straight this way. So then you know that it connects to this and this has to go some way. So you just kind of connect it around like that. Explaining the, the, you know, the fast solutions to a lot of these puzzles. Uh, I don't really have a good way to do that. But, yeah. Uh, once you get practice with some of these tile puzzles, they become pretty straightforward. Uh, oh. There we go. All right. So next we have bilge pumps. Bilge pumps is going up. Again, monitor your buffs. Cast shield. Drink that resist acid potion. Drink that resist electricity potion. If you don't have resistance to any of the elements, you can always buy resist 20 potions from the 12 or from there is a vendor inside of the um, uh, catacombs up at the top. Um, if you just type in chat exclamation point builds, it brings up the build repository, which has all of the builds. And it's at the top of that list. So it's very easy to find. You can also Google Strimtom's Van Guide. It'll come up as well. Anyway, Bilge is right here above main control. So you just kind of go straight up and you can't miss it. He's just literally in the way. So anyway, so we come in here. We kill some troglodytes. You know, have a good time. Uh, miss more than half of our attacks. Because uh, it's DDO in a nutshell. And then uh, keep going. So then once you're over here... Uh, again, there's some troglodytes in this room. They're invisible, so you need spot to see them. I don't have any spot on this character because uh, I have a 8 wisdom. So what are you going to do? Not enough skill points to put into spot. Uh, maybe I will start leveling spot. That'd be cool. I might do that. I just need spot for... Uh, I need to get like a key lock ring or something to actually allow me to spot anything with this character. Which I don't think it would be too hard to get. I mean, there's an extra shrine here. So you can always hit this shrine if you want. But once we've activated the bilge pumps, that's when we head into the... Uh, final section of the furnace. Now the final section of the furnace is a little fun because it has a uh, valve that doesn't work. There's literally a air jet that does not function properly um, for two reasons. One, it has a percent chance to push you all the way to the top of a room when it's probably not supposed to. And also whether it works is completely random and there's no way to force it to work. Uh, so it's very interesting. Have I taken any ranger levels yet? Yes, I am ranger 4, bard 3, artificer 2 currently. Anyway, so just kill these ads here. Anyway, so now that we're in this big room. You come in here. 
Oh, hello, apprentice. So what you do is you pull this valve. This requires feather falling. And once you have it, you can then get pushed all the way up. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Uh, you're going to notice that there will be a visual of you going all the way up on here. And then you don't actually. And then the game recalibrates because there's a desync between your client and the actual server. So just, just keep going. Eventually you'll get it. See, it looks like I went all the way up. And then I didn't actually go all the way up. And that's pretty much all you do. It's easier if you have two people because you have one person just pull the lever. And then like so, it pushes you all the way to the top. Once you're up here... And you just quickly jump up onto this section, pull this lever, and uh, you're pretty much done. Now, assuming that in each of the other furnace rooms, you pulled the blue valve. Somebody did it here. Uh, this will allow you to fight the avatar of, avatar of Dwiblex at the end of the quest, which I'll show you how to do. But last thing, we have to restart the intake system, which means go to the final room. The final room is, again, right in front of the entrance. So if you have Dimension Door at this point, you can cast Dimension Door, head right back to the start, and you're right there. It's the way that this quest can get done in 12 minutes or less, or if you have a group of people going to different areas, less than 10 minutes easily, if everyone just knows where to go, and you have at least one person who can cast Dimension Door. So we head up here. We go all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Uh, as we walk slowly and drink some coffee, you know, and relax. So these force traps do basically zero damage. They're very, very light. But bear in mind, some of these force traps are actually real. There's like two in here that are programmed wrong, and they're whole force traps, and they do like 200 damage. So there is a chance that when you come into this quest, you will just insta-die to one of these force traps. Just keep that in mind. I don't know which ones they are, but there's like a couple in here that are real traps, and not these like little baby traps. Anyway, you come in here. As you walk in, there's going to be monsters that are spawning on the ledges. You want to kill the ledge monsters first. So that's what I'm going to do because they cast a whole bunch of dangerous spells. And they are dangerous. Like so. There's also a bunch of ads that are going to come and get you. So, uh... I go. Get them. Okay. Once all this stuff is done, that's when we want to move down. So, uh, now that all these ads are dead, uh, there's levers underneath these two water jets. When I walk over, I'm going to get attacked by troglodytes. They're going to spawn. So I step here. Uh, step here. And now they spawn. Again, this is where you want to... You don't want to pull the lever. You want to organize, figure out what troglodytes you're dealing with, if there are champions, other things that spawn. So this is where it's very easy to die. This room is quite dangerous if you're not paying enough attention. Because you just got all of a sudden murdered by one of these troglodytes. Because they just jump up behind you and go, Hello! Uh, something is dying, and I do not know where. I hope that somebody has figured that one out. Anyway, again, same thing. I'm not pulling. I am just going to kill this guy. The Dribbless, uh Warlords deal a lot of damage, and the Spellcasters, specifically the Warlocks with their Ball Lightning, can hit upwards of 50 damage uh, per Ball Lightning, so there's a chance they can do upwards of 80 to 100. Again, you just want to be very careful. Now, with both these pulled, we walk over here, and same thing is going to happen as I get closer to this. Uh, I'm going to hit the Warlock and get a double one and miss! One in 400, baby! Oh, yeah! Game wants to know how I'm going to handle that one. Ah, uh, feels good. Anyway, once everyone's in, uh, we hit the valve and the quest is over. Boom. That's how to pit in 18 minutes and 29 seconds. And mimics. Now, of course, there is extra stuff. Like I said, at the bottom here, there's a whole other monster called the Avatar of Dwiblex, which you can fight if you want. Uh, pretty fun monster, so we can just go do it. Uh, which has a chance to spawning Mux Doom. Again, this is something you want to have Feather Falling for. Everyone should, in theory, have Feather Falling in the group. At the very least, we have a Warlock. If they have even one point spent in the Tainted Scholar Tree, uh, they should be able to cast Feather Falling on themselves and the whole party. You come over to the second tower. It's directly under the furnace. So you just come over to where the furnace is, right here, and you just float all the way down. It's directly under the furnace. So you just kind of chill, float. It takes a little while. Ah. <sighs> Uh, you want to have acid resist when you come down here. Also, important note, Avatar of Dribblex is basically immune to all forms of magic. So, uh, you can't hit him with magic damage. It's got to be physical. Uh, I'm going to cast spells. And then I just start shooting the Avatar of Dribblex. Fortunately, I deal physical damage. Uh, apparently, good damage also affects him, but he takes half. But yeah, like force damage, uh, fire, lightning cold, acid, all that stuff basically doesn't work. It's worth a little bit of XP. And, if you're lucky, you get a Mux Doom. Which is, I believe, a club that does more damage. An easier muck uh, and ooze beating weapon is called Muck's Devastation. 
It comes from the quest uh, kind of a big deal, and it is a great club, and it's a better weapon. So if you need something, that's definitely a direction I would go instead of this direction. Anyway, that is how you do pit. I'm posting this entire thing, this 20-minute uh, video on YouTube. So uh, for people for the future, if you want to know how to do it. So if you are uh, interested in checking more, more of this content, make sure you check out the live stream at twitch.tv slash So that way you can see this stuff live if you want to get some more helpful guides. If you're like, man, I, I knew there must be a fast way to do that quest. Is there fast ways to do other quests? Well, I can't post a video about every single quest in the game. Or can I? Probably not. But uh, I do run the quests all the time. So I might teach you a little mini optimizations to get through your quest just a smidge faster. Um... Enjoy the rest of your day. Boom. YouTube video outro. Hydrate. Cool.